All right, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today we're going to be talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome. We see this quite frequently in our clinic along with endometriosis and all these various, you know, new diseases that are emerging over the past, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. It might be a little harsh when I say this, but I've worked with tons of women. Well, I shouldn't say tons because tons can mean thousands, but it can mean hundreds. Let's say just a, a, enough women with PCOS to actually help them get close to homeostasis. You see all those symptoms at the beginning of the slideshow. Well, this is very common in women nowadays. And from my perspective, I believe that all ALL disease is created by the person or by our society because disease is an accumulation of stress. We can say it's genetic. We can say whatever we want to say, but it started somewhere. It came from something. It came from something we're doing, we're not doing, we're exposed to emotional stress, who knows? I firmly believe that, okay? So what am I getting at with PCOS and all these women running around with PCOS and all the symptoms you see at the beginning, which are, you know, not comfortable for a female to have, you know, weight gain and acne and, and facial hair and male pattern baldness and, you know, all these things. So really what I'm getting at is we create it. So if we, we create it, we can actually help ourselves fix it. You know, sometimes it's a six-month to 12-month process, but you're making great progress along the way, okay? So let's start with the organs, okay? So you have the ovaries, which are on the side of the uterus. We'll keep it simple, okay? The women's ovaries have follicles in them, okay? They're basically tiny sacs that fill with liquid, okay? Um, the sacs are also, um, they're also called cysts as well. You can call them that as well. So each month... The um, about 20 eggs start to develop or mature, but one fully matures, okay, every month. As this one egg grows, okay, in the, um, the two small organs or the ovaries and those follicles, um, the follicle actually accumulates fluid in it, okay, so it starts to swell every single month. <clears throat> well, when the egg matures, the follicle typically breaks open and it releases the egg. Okay, and then from there it goes into the fallopian tubes and ovulation takes place, and that's a normal cycle. But with PCOS, this doesn't happen. You know, you get, the, you get hormonal fluctuations, you get the follicle and all that, but the problem is when it starts to fill, it keeps building and building up. Okay, the problem with this is um, instead of it actually being released, it remains as a cyst. Okay, and at the same time, most women will get into this with PCOS have lower levels of progesterone, so they have irregular or absent cycles, okay? So this pretty much, and also they typically have high levels of testosterone, so this actually prevents ovulation, okay? So it's one reason why they're not cycling, and another reason maybe why they're having trouble getting pregnant. You don't have to be diagnosed with PCOS to know that you have it. If you look at a lot of the symptoms on the first part of the slideshow, and you listen to what I talked about, well, a lot of the times you might have a lot of the symptoms, okay? It's not good to diagnose yourself, and it's not good to walk around saying, I have PCOS and labor yourself, because subconsciously, there's a part of you that's actually going to hold on to that, and it's going to be harder to get rid of that when you're treating yourself, okay? So I'm going to read you a passage from the, what's called the Textbook of Functional Medicine about PCOS. I'm going to give you some insight on why women get it. It's, it's pretty simple in my, my book. If you look around, though, at any medical journal, any type of website, doctors, Western medicine, there's no known cause for it, okay? But you can look at it. There's a high risk. You have a high risk for running with high blood pressure and having heart problems, having high cholesterol and having more arterial problems and, and, um, and heart problems. You have the risk of having high testosterone levels, um, having high androgens in the body, being estrogen dominant, which can lead to cancer and all those bad things. So you're at a high risk if you have PCOS. And it has come from somewhere, and there is a known cause. From my perspective, there is a known cause. Okay? So what the textbook of functional medicine says, it says insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia appear to have a relationship with androgen hormonal production. Androgen production is produced in the ovaries, um, in the adrenal glands, and fat cells. Okay? Um, this is something... You don't essentially want more of, but a guy would want more of it than a, than a woman would want, okay? There is more and more research linking high insulin levels to polycystic ovarian syndrome. The research shows that high circulating insulin stimulates certain ovarian enzymes, result resulting in elevation of testosterone, okay? 
Insulin influences the androgenic state by affecting metabolism of ovarian androgens by also regulating circulating levels of what's called sex hormone binding globulin. Okay, so it affects this SHBG. Insulin has um, been shown to lower this sex hormone binding globulin, which basically binds estrogen and testosterone, making them unavailable, thus lowering sex hormone binding globulin. Um, basically increases the bioavailability of testosterone to the tissues, which causes PCOS. Okay, so let's summarize that, because right now people probably maybe think I'm speaking Chinese or Japanese or Vietnamese or one of the eases. Um, bottom line is insulin, over-insulin production from eating conventional carbohydrates, too many carbohydrates, um, box foods, canned foods, tons of sugar, whip de doo Starbucks drinks, um, canned sodas, you name it, juices, anything with sugar in excess, and if you look at most people's diets, it is, this creates too much insulin, affects androgen production, you overproduce androgens, which affects sex hormone binding globulin, which increases test free testosterone levels in the body, which leads to increased andro androgen production, which basically leads to all your symptoms. So you're seeing that lifestyle and food affects the physiology internally, causing excess androgen production, which causes all your symptoms. It's pretty simple, and there's no known cause. You got to be absolutely kidding me. There's no known cause. Would it? Would it? God just like wave a wand and go? Hmm. Sally Jane, I'm gonna give her PCOS today because she didn't pay her credit card bill. Give me a break. It comes from somewhere, and I just basically told you. At the same time, what you typically see is women who are estrogen dominant. Okay, meaning they have a low level of progesterone in relation to estrogen and it can't work to counterbalance that, typically have, sorry, typically have the inability to ovulate, but they typically have high levels of circulating insulin, which once again, sorry, which once again affects androgen production and leads to high levels of testosterone and the symptoms you're having. So how do we, how do we deal with this? Well, it's pretty in-depth, individualized assessments, but the bottom line is, Work with someone that does holistic nutrition and lifestyle coaching like myself. I do it long distance with people on the phone and Skype every day. You want to set a foundation. You want to take a look at nutrition, the quality, the quantity, food frequency, food ratios. You want to look at lifestyle stressors like sleep. Um, there's so many things that need to be assessed to get this client in order from nutrition and lifestyle. And at the same time, the easiest thing is you want to run a full hormone panel. So you can see estrogen levels, so you can see testosterone levels, so you can see progesterone levels. Um, and at the same time, a ben another beneficial lab would be to test your adrenal glands. And both those labs should be done saliva. Saliva tests the active form of the hormone, while blood tests the inactive form. So it's completely inaccurate. So, nutrition and lifestyle principles, and if you go to a website, there's tons of articles on them. Um, but to really simplify it, you know, Go to my last one on the crap diet, eliminate all that food, eat foods from Mother Earth, vegetables, fats, good quality proteins, and eliminate all carbs in the beginning, you'll be fine for the first three months. And then there you go to tailor it to your metabolic type. Get a saliva lab done on your hormones in your adrenal glands to see what's going on so you can supplement. Okay, Supplement with bioidentical hormones and the, and the proper herbs to actually lower or balance out your insulin, balance out your testosterone levels, androgen levels, and things like that. Okay. This was a quick clip on a gigantic topic. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully I've shed some light. Eyes opened up if you have this. Give us a call if you want to set up a free consult. Go to our website, sign up for our free newsletter. Take a look at our resources page. We've got tons of free articles, audio programs. And if you're interested in our program to help with your PCUS, feel free to give us a call anytime at 760-597-9727. Hope I educated you and have a great day.